Um, I know of three women between the ages of 15 and 18 who have taken their own life in the past year and I know from um, statistics from the Butterfly Foundation and the Royal Melbourne Hospital that anorexia has gone up by 60%. Um, that was a statistic a while ago so it could have gone up even more than that. I have heard 100%. Yeah. 100% which to me is devastating having had anorexia as a teenager myself um, and feeling the insecurity before I was locked in a house with you know Instagram and the superficial world becoming my normality um, so I really feel for them and um, me myself even um, not intentionally really I call it stress anorexia have lost eight kilos in the past couple of months um, which puts my BMI under um, and so yeah I can definitely understand the stress. Can people relapse? Do you think? Oh absolutely, absolutely. Anorexia is considered a disease that is that is uh, um, chronic. It, you are forever working on it, it's like alcoholism. You know, it's an illness that you work with every single day. Okay so my first advice would definitely be limiting your time on social media like Instagram and TikTok and stop following um, sites or influencers that um, you know portray a certain body image because it's not real. They've got filters on, they're at home not eating all day you know for the most part I'm sure there's some healthy ones out there and are naturally thin but that's not the case. Um, and I guess the thing is, for me, what got me out of it was my passion um, for acting. You know, I was modelling before that, and I walked into an agency and I said, I'm going to be an actor. And um, because they were asking me to lose a ridiculous amount of weight, and um, never went back in and walked into acting. And through that, realised that beauty comes from this, you know, the story of who we are um, and our voice, not from the outside. So it was finding a passion and then that passion was driving something else from within, yeah. not external. Yeah, exactly. Finding a passion for empathy and, and um, storytelling and the human condition, you know. So yeah, I looked at psychology and acting and it took me away from this and into this. Which, which has brought me to actually love myself for the first time ever, is connecting with this, not with this. <laughs> I've taken everything from me, this maggot up there, this is on you. And to hear that story I've been told before about the homeless person doing whatever they had to do for drugs, that was me, I used to do whatever I had to do to get drugs. Now I'm clean, and I got my, I got my dream job, and I was helping other people, and that was taken away from me as well. One of my clients' mum said to me, you know, the last support worker he had, it took six months to build rapport with him for someone even to get in the car with him. He suffers addiction, severe mental health. She said, you've done it in three weeks. Wow. And when I told him I couldn't be a support worker anymore, he said he doesn't even want support anymore, unless it was from me. And that absolutely breaks my heart. So I, as a recovering drug addict, I attend like weekly not Narcotics Anonymous meetings, they're like AA but for drug addicts, right? A lot of those meetings I can't even attend anymore. Not because of this lunatic government, because the pressure that the government's putting on people and brainwashing them, right? These venues and these different groups have decided that unless you're double jabbed, you can't go to a fucking NA meeting. Yeah. I don't take any therapy either. Alcoholics Anonymous is the same, but it's worse there. So, so I, I've lost my job, I can't see my daughter, I can't earn a living. Do you know what, they can, take, they can take my job, they can take my livelihood, they can stop me going to my meetings, they can take half my friends, but they can't take my fucking soul. Yeah.